You know what day is today? It's my birthday! Yes, I turned 30 today. I'm so excited. And I already got my first present. Yes, and I want to make this video immediately because the present is so cool. I want to share with you. Look at this. Ta-da! This is British Vogue from August 1988. This magazine is also 30 years old. Can you believe it? It's amazing. So I thought we can read this magazine today together. Check the editorials and the articles. And I think it's very interesting to see how the world of fashion has changed. 30 years, I mean, that's a lot of time, no? Don't you think? And um, I don't know, just have fun with it. Let's do this. The cover of the magazine is super cool. As you can see, she is styled according to the color theory. So she's a warm type and she wears this gorgeous gold, very, very warm coat. And she looks amazing. No, great cover. I love it. Okay, I'm so excited. Let's see. crazy very big shoulders <laughs> enormous shoulders but the hairstyle I mean <laughs> I think 80s were the craziest ones for the hairstyles like this big hair is the funniest thing in the world I have to say All right, ads, ads, ads. Ooh, this is interesting, an article. The headline is like this. Danger, women at work. Da -na -na -na. Marriage may not harm your job prospects, but it can seriously damage your wealth. A small group of American economists has developed theories of the economics of the family. Their main theme is that there are links between women's earning potential and the key decisions they take in their lives. If women's earning power is rising relative to that of men, they tend to put off having children for a bit longer than they otherwise would have done. The reason is that the more a woman can earn compared to her husband, the less sense it makes for her to give up work and stay at home caring for children. Indeed, at times when women's earnings are rising, lots of women seem to postpone marriage. Why do women, even childless women, tend to earn less than men who start out in life with similar skills? We're still asking the same question, don't we? Right? Part of the explanation may well be discrimination by employers. But part, and this is hard for economics to measure, may be that young women expect to have their careers interrupted and so invest less time and effort preparing themselves for a job with good prospects. And the result is the waste of some female talent and for mothers a greater risk of poverty if their marriage breaks up and they have to become the family breadwinner. Lots of employers will use older women for the jobs which youngsters now do. To woo them, they will have to offer more pay. Once again, married women will find their pay rising relative to that of their husbands. It didn't happen at all. If this article would be in today's magazine, I wouldn't surprise. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, what are we gonna do about it? Ads are crazy. Do you care for only 10% of your skin? Maybe.
this look is super nice a red coat black classic sunglasses and black leather gloves mm, looks really cool I like it that's why we have to go to vintage stores to find these things you know it looks so nice and unique very cool looking at tweets in a new light mm, I guess tweed was in huh interesting this renewed interest was pioneered by Vivienne Westwood last winter when she forged a link with Harris Tweed in her England Goes Pagan collection for autumn, she brilliantly juxtaposes chiffon togas over tweed Miss Marple suits with Sherlock Holmes deerstalkers and shows off three-dimensional tailoring using Harris tweed for armor jackets with detachable sleeves that strip down to become waistcoats. Vivian Westwood is the best. When you see her work, you know exactly that it is Vivian Westwood because it's so unique and so original and she never looks at any trends or anything and even now, you know, most of the designers, they are all having this trend reports and they're just creating collections so they are on trend but Vivian Westwood even now, I think, still uses her creativity and her talent to create very unique and gorgeous clothes. Cindy Crawford, super young, super beautiful, of course, no doubt about it. Versace Ed looks such a cool jacket, I have to say, such a cool jacket. Oh, finally, some editorial. The hair situation, of course, is crazy, but the clothes are pretty cool and nice, uh, nice, beautiful photographs. Oh, wow, this is so cool. These are editorials made by Peter Lindbergh, super famous fashion photographer. He's not only a fashion photographer, of course, he's just a photographer that is known for his cinematic shots. I love this look, cute little velvet dress with beautiful neckline, long gloves and thigh boots, oh wow, gorgeous, Linda Evangelista of course, beautiful, unbelievable, yeah, such a, a beautiful woman, a beautiful gown, velvet and tulle, hmm. And here is more like youthful rock and roll kind of girl, huh? Yes, lyrics and chains. Beautiful photographs, don't you think? Like it's so beautiful, black and white, but amazing. I love this look, such a cool top. Oh, so beautiful. Mm, this is such a beautiful photo, yeah? With the doggy. Although, of course, like a full coat. Oh my god. 1988. What can we do? Huh? Another article. I think this sounds also interesting. The headline is like this. Good business? Sarah Mower asks whether the creative promise of the early 80s has been valued as a serious national asset. So basically it's saying that in 1994 there were many young British designers that got super famous like Mark Jacobs and John Galliano and many more. But by 1988 
they kind of went down because they couldn't compete with rising new market of mass market fashion. And there weren't many technicians or many factories at that time, but those factories were more interested to work with mass market brands because of the volume. They rather take huge order from a mass market brand than to take a small patch, small order from a young designer. So all these young designers, so promising talents, were left behind in that time just because mass market came and uh, took over the market, took over the factories and manufacturers. They all had to move to other countries and they say that they moved first in Italy and Japan because in Italy and Japan there were a lot of manufacturers and they were very professional, skilled uh, pattern cutters. So most of the British fashion basically moved abroad and were making their clothes there instead of in their homeland. And the last sentence in this article sounds like this. But if attitudes don't change, the likely scenario for the 90s is that the newly fashion educated, quality seeking British woman will be buying beautifully made clothes with British designer labels in them, which have been produced in foreign places and sold back to her from abroad. Who will be sorry then? Cindy Crawford again, but the fashion here is so 80s, it's crazy. Oh my, this dress has like 20 bows on it. I like this one more. She, look, she looks like a badass. At least there's no big hair here. Wow, this is a beautiful look, no? Tight, high-waisted pants, white blouse, probably silk, and a black coat. Mmm. This one, how to wear the new trousers. I guess tight trousers were new, the new trousers, apparently. So you tuck them in, in the boots. The same way we were wearing it like 10 years ago, no? Remember, we did that too. Now no one does it, okay? Very nice, like a city looks. Although we all got used to the idea that in the 80s everything was like super crazy, crazy colors like neon colors, a lot of synthetics, big hair, crazy makeup. Here in Vogue we can see that the style was actually pretty cool, pretty slick and the colors weren't that crazy. I like it. Look at other supermodels, Tatiana and Mila. It says that Mila was 13 in this picture. 13, she started at such a young age. Now it's the same, as younger is better. How in fashion? Young, super young, super slim, super pretty. That's what matters. And I think that's it. There's some advertising here. And what is this? Six recipes for pies. I should make some. Although 
all the recipes look like you need to spend like all day to make a pie maybe in another 30 years okay <laughs> okay yes and uh, the the rest of the magazines are just the advertising again like banners and all kinds of stuff you could find It was really interesting and what I've learned is that we basically are having the same problems as 30 years ago because we still are fighting for the equal pay, right? We're still not there yet, not at all, not even close. And the young designers are still struggling to compete with mass market monsters and big fashion houses and it's very hard for them to build a business. Interesting that they were hoping that it will change in the 90s and it's 2018 already now and nothing really changed. I mean, there are good things also, you know, that happened. First of all, no big hair anymore, yeah? big plus <laughs> also no crazy makeup big plus and what else and no huge enormous shoulders let's stay positive let me know what you think about the articles about the editorials you saw let's chat a little bit Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.